Now, back to this rational expression, we're going to simplify it just yet. We're going to talk about evaluating a rational expression. And this is a type of problem where, given an expression, then also given some information, what we should evaluate, that x equals 2 for this example, it means go to this expression. In each spot where we have an x, we are plugging in a 2 in parentheses. So a 2 into this x and that x, as well as the x in the denominator. And now we are going to do order of operations to evaluate numerator and denominator. So exponent first, 4. The multiply is giving us 8. And we're, we're going to keep these three terms separate to do our addition last. The denominator is just a 2 plus 1, 3. So let's add up the numerator. 4 plus 8 plus 3 is 15. We end up with 15 thirds which we can divide even later simplify equals the whole number 5. Now let's put that 5 on hold, come back to our rational expression and try to simplify it. The way we like to simplify is to factor then cancel. Now this is going to be a little bit different from our previous example because look at our numerator. We've got several terms. We have three terms. So instead of thinking of our x squared as x times x and thinking about prime factors of 4x, take a different approach. Like all the factoring that we just devoted so much energy and time to, how do we factor this trinomial? three terms where our leading coefficient is 1. We don't see that coefficient, so we know it's 1. And that's when we would look for a pair of numbers multiplied together would equal the last number 3. Added together, they'll equal the middle coefficient 4. And we factor the numerator as x plus 3 times x plus 1. The denominator, we cannot factor x plus 1 any further. It is what it is. There's the factor. And now, thinking about what can we cancel, we have these binomial factors that match up. x plus 1 in the numerator with x plus 1 in the denominator. Those are canceled, and our simplified answer is x plus 3. OK, what can we try to do with all the information that we have here? We have shown so far that if x equals 2, we can plug it into our expression, evaluate it, and it equals 5. But what if we don't plug into this expression, but we simplify the expression first? Now we plug the 2 in place of this x, and it equals the same 5. There are even a couple other interesting things we can observe. Let's go back to this 15 over 3, which was our result from doing the evaluation and right before we got to the end and simplified this fraction. So 15 thirds, what if we look at the prime factors of 15 and 3? So the 15 is our 5 times 3. We have it over 3. And we can see the factors that we would cancel would be those 3s. Now, compare this scene right here to this scene right here. We can see that we did very similar canceling, and we had one term left over, one factor left over from the numerator. Now, remember, x is 2. If x is 2, then the one that did not get canceled was the 2 plus 3, the 5. And the ones that did get canceled were the x plus 1, if x is 2. That's going to be 2 plus 1, 3 right there, and another 2 plus 1. And that's exactly the numbers that we canceled, 3s. So my point with this example is that as we go further with rational expressions, we can get a bit lost in what it really means, working with all these variables and factoring x squared plus 4x plus 3 into x plus 3 times x plus 1. And I just want you to remember that these are all still representing numbers. We know that x represents some number that is unknown, and so x plus 3 is another unknown number. It's, it's 3 more than x. And just remember that all the steps that we are doing, they work with actual numbers, and that is really what is at the heart of all of these steps that we are doing. Operations on numbers, just ways that we can extend it to numbers that are still unknown. I want to look at this same idea with a few more examples, just to illustrate the point a little bit more. So it's our same rational expression, x squared plus 4x plus 3 over x plus 1. 
The way we would simplify it would be to do the factoring first. There's our numerator factored, the denominator we could not factor. Right after factor is cancel, x plus 1 binomial factors were canceled, and the x plus 3 is left over, and technically you could think of it like there's an x plus 3 left over in the numerator. If we ever cancel everything out from numerator or denominator, if everything gets canceled, there's always a 1 that gets put back. But if the 1 shows up in the denominator, that is usually left out, just like a fraction like 5 over 1 equals 5, 9 over 1 equals 9. Well, this quantity x plus 3 over 1 will just equal x plus 3. Okay, now for an example, we're going to pick a different x value. This time, let's pick 8. We're going to evaluate this expression when x equals 8. So in each x, we're substituting in an 8 in parentheses. We'll follow order of operations. The exponents, 8 squared, will give us 64. There are the, there's the 1 multiply, 4 times 8, 32. And finally, we'll wrap it up with addition. We get a 99 over 9. Another fraction that does divide evenly equals 11. So are we matching, are our answers matched up? We evaluated and it equaled 11. Would we get 11 if we evaluated our simplified expression? Yes, definitely. 8 plus 3, we'd get the same 11. A way to show that we did good simplifying is that if we pick some numbers and evaluate our original expression, and then we go and evaluate our simplified expression, they definitely need to match. If they don't match, we've gone off path. If they do match, well, it's not a guarantee that we did correct simplifying, but it's a good indication that we did. Let's take it a step further and compare this 99 over 9. If I wanted to try to simplify it, one thing I could do would be break this 99 up into 11 times 9, and I'm leaving the denominator as the 9. I'm not going for all prime to illustrate this point. Um, the 9's cancel, and what did we see with this rational expression when we did our canceling? There are the terms, the factors that we canceled, x plus 1 is another x plus 1 matches up with those nines that we cancel, and they definitely match up if you think about, well, for our example, we used x equals 8. There's 8 plus 1 equals 9, and another 8 plus 1 equals 9, the ones that were canceled. The 11 is what was left over, and check out this binomial factor, x plus 3. If that's 8 plus 3, that gives us the 11. Now, this line right here, once we put in x equals 8, we're working with numbers only, and it's not as useful as being able to work with these polynomials with an x still in the picture. So it's very useful to know about all the algebra we can do with these polynomials with a variable still in the picture. It's much more useful than just showing time after time, oh, this works with x equals 8. It also works with x equals 2 using just the variables f and then factor and cancel, we have a way to show that it's going to work with almost every real number.